Good morning, and welcome to Greater Rose of Sharon Sunday morning service. Join us on Facebook Live at 10 a.m., and it will be repeated at 11 Sunday morning. Also, you can watch it in a rerun on YouTube at 6 p.m. So sit back, get your Bibles out, and join us for Sunday morning with Pastor Cedric Cross at the Rose. Way back, now I got old songs saying something like this. I'll meet you in the morning. I'll meet you in the morning with the Thank you. 
excited about Jesus, come on, give God a hand clap of praise. If this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. It is now time for our all to call prayer. Amen. And we know that we all stand in the need of prayer. Amen. And this morning as we uh, cast all our cares on him, we want to be mindful of all of the bereaved across the land and country. We want to be praying for the sick and shut in. Amen. There's so much going on uh, in this world in which we live. Listen, we just we just want to turn it all over to him because we know he is able to do all things but fail. 
And, and while we're praying, listen, don't forget to be thankful. Amen. Listen, don't, don't forget to tell him thank you for everything as well as it is. <laughs> that could be us who had everything lost in a fire. That could have been us who had everything washed away in a flood. We could be in the hospital. We could be uh, bedridden at home. So let's not forget to tell the Lord thank you because he is worthy of our praise. And this morning, uh, our prayer warrior is going to be Reverend Sean Campbell. Amen. Listen, we want to uh, be praying for our youth and our uh, school teachers and administrators for Little Rock. Uh, the first day of school is tomorrow. Yeah. So we want to be praying for them and that God will uh, be with them uh, as they get back into the swing of uh, learning and studying and and let's just pray that God will keep them safe and protected. And whatever it is that you're dealing with this morning, there's no better place for it than at the feet of Jesus. At this time, Reverend Campbell. Most gracious and heavenly Father, Jehovah, Father of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, great God, creator of everything, creator of all things. Lord God, before we come begging and asking for stuff, we want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us, you kept us from last week up until this week, you allowed us to come back to your house of prayer safely. Lord God, some of us have gone through so many things since the last time we saw each other. Just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for a choice of clothing to wear. Thank you for a little something to eat. Thank you for shelter. Thank you for just all your many, many blessings, Lord God. Lord God, I, I, I even want to step out and say thank you for the hard times, Lord God. Lord God, thank you for trials and tribulations, Lord God. Because these things make us stronger, Lord God. They build character, Lord God. So, Lord, uh, and, and while we're going through, we know you are with us. So, thank you for being with us through the storm, through the rain. Lord God, I pray for Brother Eggerson and the loss of his niece. Pray for Deacon Finley and the loss of his grandson. Truth be told, Lord God, there are a lot of families grieving right now. There are a lot of deaths going on all around us. But for some reason, Lord God, because of your grace and mercy, you've kept us safe. Thank you, Lord. It could have been us, Lord God, in any of those situations, but, your, but because of your grace and your mercy, you blocked all that. Thank you, Lord, for blocking it, Lord God. Lord, we pray for... Uh, Christian families, Lord God, that are trying to keep it together, Lord God, that, that Christian man and that Christian woman, husband and wife, Lord God, you ordain marriage between man and a woman, Lord God. Honestly, Lord God, the family is under attack. The devil doesn't want to see a Christian family succeed, but we all know that he has limited, he has a limited ability but you have all power, Lord God. Where the man, where some men and the devil will say, no, Lord God, you said yes. Where some men and the devil said it was over, God, you said no, it's just beginning. Lord God, thank you for a new thing. Thank you for a new life. Thank you for just newness. Thank you for the refreshment of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I come in prayer for my pastor, Lord God. I pray that you will continue to keep him, keep him, stand him up strong, Lord God. Continue to keep speaking to him, Lord God, as he speaks to us, Lord God. Continue to keep feeding him as he feeds us, Lord God. Lord, I know he gets tired, but just give him the strength to keep on going. Sometimes he gets frustrated, Lord. Take care of that too, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Whatever he needs, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I pray that it be done. Not just for his, not for him, totally for him, Lord God, but for your glory. 
Let his life bring you glory. In Jesus' name. We pray for those that are sick, that are incarcerated. We pray for those that are having pain, feeling pain in their body right now, Lord God. Lord, if you don't want to remove the pain, just give them the strength to deal with it. We're not going to try to tell you how to do your job because we don't know what your will is. But we can say, Lord, let your will be done because it's a perfect will. There are no flaws in your will, Lord God. Lord, there's just so many things I could thank you for. There's so much I could ask you for. But, Lord God, I know that you know what we need. So, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I just ask that you would meet our need. Give us what we need to love right, to live right, to give right. Give us that same, same patience as we deal with our brothers and sisters that you have with us. Give us that long suffering. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will even give us the, 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 the acknowledge us so we can know the difference between good and bad. It's in Jesus' name I pray. God, I praise your holy name by saying hallelujah. Amen. know that Jesus is coming. Yeah. We don't know the day, the time, or the hour, but he's coming, so I hope you, that you got your soul right. I'm trying to get mine right. Mom, I'm ready when you're ready. one question for y'all this morning. <laughs> Have you heard the news? Because he's coming. Have y'all heard the news? Jesus is coming soon. Have y'all heard the news? Jesus is coming soon. Have y'all heard the news? As a thief and a robber by night. You better get ready. You better get ready and get your soul right. Listen, he's coming in the cloud. It may be night or noon, children. You better get ready. Jesus is coming. Listen, have y'all heard? against daughters, fathers against sons. Don't let him catch you. Don't let him catch you with your work undone. Listen.
Let's pray. Y'all better get ready. You better get ready. Jesus. Jesus is Check this out right here. He's coming. He's coming soon. Jesus. He's coming soon. Have y'all read? He's coming soon. The headline. He's coming soon. Listen. St. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He's coming soon. Well, they told me to tell you that Jesus is coming soon. He's coming soon. Daniel's soul. He's coming soon. As a stone. He's coming soon. Cut out the mountain. He's coming soon. I know what? And he's it, cause he's sown. He's coming soon. A little bitty wheel. He's coming It was turning in the middle of a wheel. Y'all know what? Jeremiah said, He's coming soon. He said, It's just like fire. He's coming soon. Shut up in my bones. He's coming That's what? Soon. Y'all better get ready. You better get ready. You better get ready. You better get ready. Everybody better get ready. You better get ready. You better get ready. You better get ready. You better get ready. Oh. Mr. President, are you ready? ready? And everybody, are you ready? ready? Because Jesus is coming soon. We got trouble in the East. War and rumors of war. Mothers against their daughters. We got drugs everywhere. You know what? People are robbing and stealing. And people keep robbing and killing. Y'all, you better get ready. The liar, you better get ready. Government, you better get ready. Because Jesus is coming soon. You better get ready. Amen. No man knows the day nor the hour when Jesus will return. So it would be in our best interest, brothers and sisters, to live every day with expectation. Because as we read the Bible, listen, there's nothing else that needs to happen before Christ could return. As I have said before, listen, the Lord could come before we leave this service. So we need to be ready. Amen. Thank you, Mayor Course, for blessing us and reminding us that Jesus is coming soon. Also, I uh, want to remind the church that on next Sunday at 2.30, we've been invited to Holy Cross Baptist Church to celebrate their Mayor Course anniversary. And our Mayor Chorus uh, is on to uh, sing uh, a couple of selections. Amen. Y'all pray for the male cause. They've been getting some work here lately. Amen. Amen. And we want to praise God for Sister Lenny Jackson. Amen. Amen. Stepping in and blessing us. Amen. And also, as I mentioned earlier, we know school is starting tomorrow for Little Rock School District. So to our young people that are here and those who may tune in, uh, young people, do your best. When you go to school, you're going there to learn. Don't get caught up in anything that you should not. Uh, your purpose for being there is to get your education. Yeah. Uh, you may not be a straight A student, mm. but just do your best. Yeah. That's yeah. all the Lord expects. That's all your parents expect. Yeah. Now, if you are an A student, yeah. don't lower the standard. Yeah. Yeah. But if your best is all C's, then you just do your best. Yeah. Right. Now, let me say this. You may not be the A student, yeah. but you don't need to be the troublemaker either. Yeah, yeah. So you may not get straight A's, but you need to have good citizenship. Yeah, Listen, don't be a troublemaker. Don't, don't cause someone else to get distracted. Yeah. Right. So always do the right thing. Let your light shine even in your school, among your classmates. Listen, the Lord is looking at you and set a good example. Yeah. Amen. Listen. I've said this before. It may seem like it's cool to be grown when you're a child, but it's not cool to act like a child when you're grown. Yeah, yeah. 
So if you're 15, just be 15. 16, just be 16. Enjoy life right now, because baby, just know <laughs> the day is coming <laughs> where it's going to get real. So enjoy every day. Enjoy your life and give God the glory. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Amen. Now it's time for us to worship through giving. Amen. So at this time, if we would all stand, face the wall, and let's proceed from the rear. Amen. What time is it? It's giving time. And God tells us why we should give and how we should give. In Malachi 3 and 10, God tells us to bring the tithe to the storehouse that his house may have meat. Simply put, that means pay your tithes to support the church. And when you support the church, you're not only helping the church, but you're helping others through the church ministries. Not only that, you will be blessed. For God also say in Malachi 3 and 10, that if you give the way he say give, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Don't you want to see the church blessed? Don't you want to be blessed? You can accomplish both by giving. Now, to give to this great ministry, simply download the GiveLify app. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Again, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Go ahead and create that account. Enter the place of worship. Enter the amount you wish to give. Enter that credit card and billing information. Tap that Give Now button and smile when you do it because God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you do not wish to use the Give Lify app, you can mail your tithes, your offering, or any donation to Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. Again, that's Greater Rosa Sharon, Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. And remember, Greater Rosa Sharon is a 501c3 charitable organization. All your tithes, all your offering, all your donations are tax deductible. Until the next time, this is Deacon Duffy saying God bless you and keep you is my prayer.
That's why I'm down. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on you. Oh, come on. Come on, Jesus. And see about me. about me. Say that again. Now, sometimes you feel like you need a shoulder to cry on. So you reach out for friends and family, but they've left you alone. So now you're up in the midnight, and you can't get no sleep. Oh, that's when I dare you, I double dare you, to call on Jesus. Hey, and that's why I'm down. reminded of a story in the 8th chapter of Matthew, beginning at verse 1. After Jesus had came down from the mountainside, there was a crowd of people around him. And out of the crowd there came a leper. And the leper came to Jesus and worshiped. And the leper said, Lord, if will thou make me clean? And Jesus said, Thou shalt be clean. And he reached down and he touched the leper. And just like that, it didn't take all day. It didn't take six months. It didn't take a year. But just like that, the leper became clean. Now, I believe. Oh, come on. I believe that if, if Jesus can cleanse that leper, he can clean me up. He can clean you up. He can clean us up. Oh, come on. That's why I'm down. And I'm waiting. Oh, come on. And see about me.
Son of God, our Father, we come now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we praise you, we bless your name, Lord, because you are worthy to be praised. Lord, we know that we're saved by grace. And we just can't help but sing about your amazing grace. Lord, you went to the cross with power, but you chose to stay there. You stayed obedient even to death on the cross. You hung, bled, and died, and rose again on the third day with all power. And it is amazing. And Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made on our behalf. And now, Lord, as I stand to proclaim your good news on this day, Lord, we pray for preaching power from on high. We pray, God, that your word would prick the hearts of those that are here. Prick the hearts of those who may be viewing online. And Lord, we thank you in advance for the sinner that will come. And we will be mindful to give you all the praise, honor, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 We give thanks to God the Father and to his Son, who is Jesus the Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our teacher, and our guide. I'm sure that you would agree with me when I say it's good to be here. Somebody laid down last night and didn't wake up this morning. But God saw fit to allow you and I to see another day. We, we, we don't know about tomorrow. But he blessed us to see this day. And for that we ought to be thankful. Amen. Once again we praise God for our mayor course. For blessing us. Uh, and so under the leadership of Sister Lenny Jackson. Amen. Amen. And they're they're willing. They're just they're just so willing to step in. Uh, if they fuss, I never hear about it. Yeah. But but I, I don't think they do because they don't mind praising God. Amen. Amen. There's one verse we're going to look at this morning. Found in Ephesians chapter six, and the verse is number twelve. <coughs> Ephesians chapter six. Verse number 12. And when you have it, let it be known by saying, Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12 says, For we wrestle, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, Mm -hmm. against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Amen. Amen. 
I want to use for a subject this morning. People are not the problem. People are not the problem. Let us all say amen. Every believer is engaged in spiritual warfare. There is something that is taking place even now in the spirit realm that affects our daily lives. I know it's customary for the Baptist preacher to go to Calvary at the end of the sermon. Well, listen, since we know the victory has been won, uh, sometimes we can start out at Calvary. Uh, Christ defeated death in the grave. He he hung, bled, and died, and rose again. So we are victorious. But even though the battle has been won, we are still in a fight. And Paul reminds the church that we are in a constant battle with the forces of darkness. And we should use every spiritual weapon at our disposal. We cannot fight a spiritual battle with physical weapons. You cannot go to your closet or under the bed or to the trunk of your car and get your gun and shoot the devil. We have weapons that are not carnal. We have the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit the word of God and prayer to help us in this spiritual battle. And this is an intense battle. Brothers and sisters, please don't, don't, don't take it lightly. You see, this is not a battle that can be won by fighting people because people are not the problem. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You see, yes, there are evil people in the world. But they operate under the influence of Satan and his demons. And just so you know, Satan and the demonic realm is real. Let me give you scripture to support it. Revelation chapter 12 verse 4. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And what this text is telling us, it talks about the dragon who represents Satan in the book of the Revelation. And we talked about two, maybe three weeks ago in Sunday school about how when Satan got kicked out of heaven, one third of all of the angels that were created got kicked out with him. So we see that in Revelation 12 and 4. Then 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So the enemy is at work seeking, looking for someone to devour. Jude 6 says, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. First Peter chapter five, verse four says, for, God, for if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. So just in case you don't think that Satan and demonic uh, spirits are real, it's supported by the scripture. As a matter of fact, Jude 6 and 1 Peter, when it talks about the angels being placed in everlasting chains, there were some of the demonic angelic host that was so evil, they went straight to hell. 
It's right there in the text. Yeah. That they are, they are in everlasting chain. Then there are the, the demonic spirits that worry us yeah. every day. Because this warfare is real. <laughs> and if you think about it, here we are, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. But yet we're going through things in our life. Well, why do you think that is so? Because we have an enemy in the person of Satan. And one of his tricks is to try to convince us that he doesn't exist. There is a truth and a reality, brothers and sisters, to what is taking place in the spirit realm. So once again, people are not the problem. That coworker, that family member, your spouse, your siblings, your children, the people in the community, the people in government, listen, they are not the problem. It's the spirit working in them that is. When Satan rebelled against God, he was thrown out of heaven, and every angel that rebelled with him was also thrown out of heaven. Just a side note, just be careful of the company that you keep. It's one thing to do something on your own and get jammed up, but you get jammed up just because you hang with the wrong people. Something wrong with that. And we're not to treat this, brothers and sisters, as, as a fantasy, as something that you might see on television. Listen, Satan has a real and a powerful army. But we can shout, brothers and sisters, because he is a defeated foe. Satan has power, but he is not all powerful. Satan can be present, but he is not omnipresent. He cannot be at the same, he everywhere at the same time. Satan wanted to be God, but he is not God. God is all powerful. God is omnipresent. And even though we have to fight this fight, the victory has already been won. Christ, because of what happened at Calvary, he defeated death and he defeated the grave. He defeated Satan. But we still have to endure in this walk of life. Now listen, we must understand that Satan does not have friends. I'm going to say that again. Satan does not have friends. And in this world we live in, there are people who worship the devil. Uh, there's uh, the, the church of Satan, those who believe and worship him. But Satan don't love them. Satan don't have any friends. Listen, although people can be influenced by Satan, they are not loved by Satan. And here's the trick of the enemy. Don't miss this. The same people that will attack you and attack your character and start speaking your name and putting you out there. Well, guess what? Satan hates them too. The enemy may be using them to come after you, but Satan hates them as well. And and, and they are just the conduit. Uh, Evil spirits have to have a body to work in and work through. And the person... Uh, or, or persons that attack the Lord's church and go up against the church, listen, they are just the conduit which the enemy is using to bring oppression upon the church, persecution upon the church. But just, watch this now, just as Satan worked through the serpent in the Garden of Eden, he works through people to get to the body of Christ. Yeah. So when, we, when, the, when the enemy is, is busy, he's just doing what the Bible says he will do. Right. He's just doing his job. But Jesus did say upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. Now, Just being real, he didn't say that hell wouldn't break out in the church. (laughs) He said it wouldn't prevail. (laughs) So regardless of whether it's the church or 
something in your personal life, as long as we have Christ Jesus, not only are we on the winning team, but the situation itself, we will be victorious. Now, it may not feel like it because it's difficult to go through any type of storm. But the fact that we have Calvary in view, the fact that Jesus has already won the battle, now we still have to fight. But we're not, we're not fighting to win because we're already victorious. We're just fighting to hang in there <laughs> because the victory has already been won. And there are wolves in sheep's clothing. There are those who do not love the Lord, but they do attend church. There are those that are not a part of the body of Christ. And I've used this illustration before, and I think this makes it clear about a dog and a tick. Anyone who has a dog, you know that a tick that gets on a dog, he is not a part of the dog. He is attached to the dog. And there are people that are not a part of the body of Christ. They're, they are not a part of the church, but they are externally attached to the church because the tick is he externally attached to the dog. He is not a part of the dog. And there are those that are not a part of the body of Christ. They may come to church. They may show up in, in the building, but they are externally attached to the church. And the thing about the tick is that the tick is sucking blood out of the dog. And if the tick is not uh, removed, it could eventually kill the dog. And there are folks, Lord have mercy, that are externally attached to the church that can suck the life out of the church. And if we don't fight this spiritual battle, they will try to kill the church. But we don't have to worry about that because Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And we must be reminded that people are not the problem because the same people that are being used by the enemy can also be saved. Jesus said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. They're, listen, everybody doesn't accept Christ at the same time. And there are people that will come to church, and they still have the world in them. They may have selfishness and pride within them. But no one is beyond the hand reach of God. And it's tough sometimes because there are people that it, it would appear that they intentionally fight against God's plan. But we were told in the word of God that there are and will be wolves in sheep's clothes. But we must understand, church, the position that we should take is that because we understand what Paul is saying, he says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. What we must understand is this is something that is actually taking place in the heavenly places. So we don't need to fight against people. The meanest person you know can be saved. When people, flesh and blood, act out, it is not them, it's the spirit working in and through them. And that individual through the power of the Holy Spirit, that same troublemaker can one day get saved and be a blessing to the body of Christ. Because see, the truth be told, all of us, we weren't so nice once upon a time. We have not always uh, helped stop the gossip. Sometimes we kept it going. We have not always tried to break up the fight. Sometimes we jumped in it. And if the Lord can change us, 
the, the hell hounds and the hell raisers in church, yeah. if so be it by the power of God, they can be changed too. So we have to take the right approach to this spiritual battle because the weapons that we have are not carnal but mighty through God. Listen, we have the power of God working in us. We have the word of God that we can stand on. And we have the preaching of the gospel that can change a person's heart. And there isn't anyone who is beyond the hand reach of God. Well, someone may ask, well, listen, Reverend, what, what if the attack comes from within the church? Yeah. Uh, what, 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 what if these are saved people that are going in on me? First of all, only God knows the heart. Just because a person attends church doesn't mean they're Christian. And just because a person doesn't go to church doesn't mean that they're not saved. Only the Lord knows a person's heart. But Jesus did say, in John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. But notice what Jesus says in verse 35, John 13, verse 35. But this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. One of the key signs that you are a child of God is determined by how you treat the rest of God's children. The Bible tells us we are to do good, especially to those of the household of faith. So when people within the church fight against each other, this ain't cross-talking, this is the Bible. Jesus says, you can tell who are my disciples by the way they treat one another. Listen, we are all on the same team. Somebody else say amen. <laughs> Listen, and, and when we get to the point where the enemy can work through us to fight against other believers, something wrong with that. Once again, Satan don't have friends. And while he may be working through one to get to someone else, he'll turn right around and go, and go to work on them. Because the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes, but Jesus said, I come so you may have life and life more abundantly. As a matter of fact, listen, all we have to do is just check the fruit. Galatians 5 and 22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law and those that are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires so if you if you are one who has been redeemed there ought to be some evidence there ought to be the fruit of the spirit and anyway, I didn't say fruit plural we named some different characteristics but it is all the same fruit of the Spirit. As a child of God, you ought to have love in your heart. As a child of God, you ought to have joy in your heart. As a child of God, you ought to have peace in your heart. We ought to be faithful, gentle people. We ought to have self-control. The flesh gets, gets beside itself sometimes. But because of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we ought to have self-control. We should not indulge in anything that does not serve us and bring glory to God. Mm -hmm. We ought to have self-control. That, that's the fruit of the Spirit. And brothers and sisters, when we understand how spiritual warfare works, mm -hmm. we will leave here understanding that people are not the problem. That will cause us to pray for individuals. There's no need. Listen, the enemy wants to destroy what God has ordained. Why do you think husbands and wives fight? It's one thing to disagree, but to fight. Why? Because the enemy wants to destroy what God has ordained. 
Because if you put a man of God and a woman of God on one accord, that family will be blessed. And if the enemy can infiltrate and drive a wedge between mom and daddy, that's going to affect the whole house. And the enemy don't want to see you blessed. And when we understand the strategy of the enemy, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now, it's a whole lot in the sixth chapter of Ephesians. But we, we got to talk about this flesh and blood issue. <laughs> because when we realize that it, it is not the person that's fighting against me, it's the spirit, an unclean, demonic spirit working through them. And when I see it for what it is, church, when we see it for what it is, now we can approach it in the proper manner. <laughs> see, I don't have to fight the person because that person can be redeemed and can be changed. But what I can do is plead the blood of Jesus over them. <laughs> what I can do is pray for them that the Lord would deliver them from that evil way. And once we turn it over to the Lord, and just know there are some folk, you got to turn them over to the Lord. And you better do it. You're going to wear yourself out trying to change folk. But don't you understand that God is the creator? And there are times in where you, listen, you steady trying to get your husband to do this. Steady trying to get the wife to do that. Steady trying to get the children to do this. Listen, at some point, you got to back up, wipe your hands of it, and give them over to the Lord. Right. Because sometimes we can get in God's way. But when you turn it over to the Lord, God can do a better job of correcting people than we can. Because we have our own flaws. And we, we have to make sure that we ask the Lord to work on us. Because if you're not very careful, that's, that, that evil spirit can jump all over you if you're not careful. That is why we cannot overlook the ministry of the Holy Ghost, y'all. He is the one who keeps us. He is the one who maintains us. Listen, you would have you gone off on somebody yesterday if the Lord hadn't helped you. Somebody had something you dealt with 24 hours ago that could have turned out in a whole bad way if it had not been for the Lord working on you on the inside. And we cannot overlook how the Holy Spirit ministers to us. When people have done us wrong, it is our, it's, it's just in our nature to try to get back at them. We want revenge. But when we turn it over to God and let him handle it, he said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. That's what he said. So you, you don't have to go looking for people. Because God already know where he is. You don't need to seek revenge. Because that makes you just as evil as a person who did something to you. We must understand, church, that people are not the problem. We're to love people. We ought to care for people. We ought to pray for them. People that do you wrong, pray for them because God can change their hearts. And when we understand that it is not the person it's the evil spirit. Paul said it, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age. Now, when Paul talks about, he, he breaks that down, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual hosts in the, in the uh, heavenly places, wicked spirits in the heavenly places. There are degrees of the in the evil spirit realm of Satan. That's why I wanted to read to you 1 Peter 5 and 8, uh, also uh, 1 Peter uh, 5 and 4, Jude chapter 6, because there were angels, evil angels, demonic spirits that are so evil, he just, the Lord just cast them straight to hell. And here's another note. Hell was not created to send anybody that did not believe in Christ. Hades was prepared for the angels that rebelled with Satan. God did not prepare hell to send people because it was his desire for all people to be saved. Yes, 
He sent Christ for all people to who put their faith in him to be baptized and, and believe in Christ Jesus and to be saved. Yes, sir. So he didn't create hell anticipating that there were people that would reject him. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. Hell was created for the angels, and it's right there in the text. You, th that's why hell exists. Because there were some angels that rebelled with the devil that was so evil, the Lord just threw them straight to hell. But then we still got demonic spirits we deal with. And some people don't, don't believe in it. They don't, it it's a fantasy. That, that can't be real. Listen, don't fall for the trick. There are evil people in this world being used by the demonic spirit. But those same people. If they come in contact with the gospel, some of those same evil people can be saved and become a part of the body of Christ. I think about those evil dictators we learned about in school, Adolf Hitler, uh, Benito Mussolini, uh, all of these dictators who were a part of wars and killed a lot of people and they did evil things. But if those people, now they're, they're dead and gone now, but if they confessed their sins before they took their last breath, as much trouble as they caused while they were living, if they confessed Christ before they took their last breath, they are saved. Now, it may not seem fair to us yeah, 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 yeah. because when we think about it from our carnal mind, we think, wait a minute, this person ain't done but nothing but raise hell their whole time they on earth. Yeah. But at the last minute, if they confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, the Bible says, thy shall be saved. So don't write anyone off. There is still hope for that wavered child. There's still hope for that wayward sibling. There's still hope for the when we look on the national scene we know it's a lot of evil in the world. Even those people if they submit and surrender they can be saved. That, that person that you listen, you don't have to say man but all of us have some people in our life and preferably we've gotten past it but there was that at least one person we hated them to the core. I'll admit, I, when I was 19, 18 years old, when I was still out there in, my, in the world doing my thing, there was this one person. I told my daddy, if I ever see him, I'm going to kill him. Because I hated him that much. I told my own daddy, I said, if I ever see this particular person, I'm going to blow him away. And at that time, the evil spirit was working in me. But thank God for redemption. <laughs> thank God for redemption. <laughs> and if the Lord can save me, change the way I think, he can do it for you. People are not the problem. It's the evil working in them. But Jesus can save anyone because of the sacrifice that he made on an old rugged cross when they put nails in his hands and nails in his feet lifted him up between heaven and earth, pierced him in the side. He hung, bled, and died. But on the third day, he rose again with all power in his hands. And whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed because of their faith in Christ Jesus. Listen, people are not the problem. We've got to trust God. Continue to pray for people. I know there are people that are speaking your name, there are people putting you out there. I know it. Because in this life, as believers, we will face persecution. Mm -hmm. But as long as we trust God, yes, sir. he will yeah. see us through. Yes, sir. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <clears throat> Master, we come now at the close of this message. We thank you, we praise you, we bless your name, Lord. Father, we thank you for reminding us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We understand, Lord God, now that it is not people. It's the evil presence of demonic spirits in this world in which we live. But, Master, we know that you prevail 
over the enemy. You prevail over evil. We know that you are in control, Father God, and that you are already victorious. Lord, the battle has already been won, but we are just in the fight. And Lord, help us to fight victoriously. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We bless your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. There may be one here this morning who does not know the Lord or tuning in via Facebook Live who has never surrendered your life to Christ. There's no better day to, than to get things right with God than it is today. You may have been saved and kind of doing your own thing, and the Holy Spirit is telling you it's time to get back in fellowship with God. Listen, you may already be saved, Stand in the need of prayer. Listen, Jesus said, my house should be called a house of prayer. <laughs> and whatever your care or concern may be, just know God is able. He is well able to see you through. So as we're standing all over the building, listen, you can come by letter of Christian experience or a candidate for baptism. All the Lord wants you to do is come. Would there be another today? I'm redeemed. I was born with a pride. Jesus changed my whole life. Well, anybody? be another today. You tell them that I am redeemed. Digging with you. Digging with you. I'm redeemed. Oh, I was born. If you hear him speak it to your heart, One why don't day you come? Jesus, he changed my Be another. 
thank God. I thank God. I thank God. God bless you. You may be seated. I'm Clap of praise. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to hear from Sister Cross. Amen. We know prayer changes things. Prayer works. Amen. And listen, uh, our young people that are getting ready for school tomorrow, you all come up forward also. We want to pray for our youth also as we get ready for school tomorrow. Y'all come forward. Deacon Jane Williams, I want you to pray for us. Yes. There's no better place for your problem than at the feet of the master. Yes. And whatever the Leverett family is dealing with, we know what the Finley family is dealing with. Amen. The one thing we do know, God is still in control and he's able to do all things with faith. Our youth that are getting ready for school, we pray for their safety. Amen. We pray for uh, that they, they would learn be educated. We pray for teachers, yeah. administrators, those who care for our young people when they're away from us. Let's keep them in prayer as well. And Deacon Williams, as the Holy Spirit called, called your name just now, and I heard him. So, brother, you go ahead and pray for us. Creator of all things. Lord, we thank you right now for families coming to you for Father God, for strength Father God, for we know that you can speak the word Father God a soft voice Lord God and, and just turn everything around Lord God, because you have power, there's power in your, in your name, there's power in your, your word, your word you said my word is spirit Lord God, and we ask that your, your Holy Spirit Lord God, wrap around this family, Lord God, the Finley family, Lord God, the Leverett family, Lord God, and just touch them where they need to be touched, Father God. Touch them for strength, Lord God. Touch them for, for clarity, Lord God, that, that you are God, that you, you can do anything but fail, Father God. In every area of their life, Lord God, they put it in your hand. And then, Father God, we know that you are able, and we just place it at your feet because it's on record, Lord God, that that you can open blind eyes, Lord God, unstop deaf ears, Lord God, put paralyzed people back together, Father God. Lord, we know that you are able to, even the children, Lord God, to touch the children as they get ready to 
make this journey this year for school, Father God. Lord God, endow them with your precious Holy Ghost, Father God. They would, they would, they would stand even in the midst of turmoil, even at school, Father God, that they would be an example. They would be a light, Father God. And then, God, we know that you are able to illuminate mind. Lord God, Pastor Cross talk about C's and B's and A's. Lord God, we know that you have all power in your hand, Father God. And Lord God, I, I understand that a, a person that make deeds, Father God, is a business uh, a person right now, Father God. So, Lord, we know that you are able to just do anything but fail, Lord God. Wrap your arms around the family, the children that are getting ready to go to school, Father God. And, Lord God, we put it all in your hand, Lord God. There is nothing too hard for you, Lord God. And we bless your name right now for what you are getting ready to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Deacon. Amen. We praise God for prayer. Amen. Amen. May to God be the glory. Amen. Listen, we thank God for the prayers. We thank God for the praise. Amen. We thank God for the presence. Amen. Of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. <clears throat> Listen, we are getting ready to leave this place. Amen. And we pray that something was said on today that will allow us to have a closer walk with the Lord. And let's let us leave here remembering people are not the problem. There's evil spirits in this world that are working in and through people. But those same people can be redeemed. Amen. Listen, if nothing else calls our attention, amen, let's all stand. Father, we come now at the close of this worship hour. We thank you. We praise you. We bless your name because you are worthy to be praised. And Father, we ask right now, Lord, that you would help us to understand that even in the midst of difficulty, trying times, storms, tribulations, that you're still in control. We know that you love us. We know, Father God, that even in the midst of it, that you're in control. And we pray, Father God, that you would help us to trust you, continue to keep the faith, and know that you will work everything out according to your divine plan. So, Lord, as we leave this place but never your presence, we pray for traveling grace. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue to lead, guide, and direct our path. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen.